if you stand next to him, you say, man, he is short. Did you see what the little fellow just did? I mean, he's thought of as a little man, but he's not a little man. I mean, he may be short, but he's not a little. You've heard of the big story. Well, here's the little story. The first convention of the Midgets of America, which is now campaigning for half fare on trains and airlines for midgets. Like the real world, little people have been making inroads in the NFL. Security! <laughs> Security! Hey, now we got two small children over here. What up, boys? What's happening? But as short players continue to rise to the occasion, from time to time they still get teased about their height. Man, you short. I thought I was short. <laughs> I'm like, man, he's too little, man. He is a shrimp. What I look like calling somebody little, though. One common misconception is that all football stars are towering muscle-bound behemoths. That just is not the case. <laughs> Some of the game's greatest heroes are quite short in stature. While there was certainly no shortage of candidates for this show, compiling our list became a tall order. After all, what should matter more, size or talent? Bravo to the Hall of Famer! If the list is greatest short players of all time, I think the bigger criteria should be shortness. No, it's still got to come down to talent. You know, we don't want to watch footage of guys playing mediocre football, but they're 5'3". Let them be the measuring stick. We doing the measuring, though. I would have figured the top ten shortest players all had to be kickers. I mean, the grammaticas, there's like seven grammaticas. They had to be one through seven, right? Oh, wrong. Kickers were disqualified for fear that they might do just that, overpopulate our list. In the end, we found ten players who stood five foot nine or under, but weren't short on big playability. Short people are people too. Way to go, little man! And in the NFL, where big is usually better, sometimes those little guys, they stand tall. The number 10 shortest player of all time. Darren Sproles, 5'6", 187. Darren Sproles. Whew, a nightmare. Any defensive coach will tell you he's a special player. Any special team coach will tell you the same thing. To the 30, 35, 40, 45, 50, has some room. 40, 30, lightning bug is going to go. He's an explosive guy. You know, for his height and his size, he's real, like, compact. You get behind all these big offensive linemen, 6'6", six, 6'7", six, six, and the guys on defense will tell you they can't see him. Frozen. Frozen. Touchdown! The little guy! There's Rolls! His size factor really works to his advantage. He's a true weapon in the National Football League. The media guide has him listed at five foot six. Is that accurate? Uh, it's probably stretching it a little bit. If he's five five and a half, what does it matter? It's accurate. Uh, you know, he's five six. He's a legit five six, but uh, you know, he plays like he's six two. Barreling into the end zone, touchdown, San Diego. Darren Sproles is one of the strongest guys, pound for pound. Sproles dashing through a tackle, through another, keeps on driving, touchdown. I mean, he came out of the womb, I think, at ten and a half pounds. So think about this. He's only gained, a, what, 170 pounds in his lifetime since he was a baby? And they called him Tank. Unfortunately for Sproles, that's not the only thing he was called. Sproles is little. Short people have been uh, made fun of all their life. It is time. Ah. They've been taunted all their lives. It's way back in the roller coaster days. You can't go on the roller coaster, Darren Sproles. You're not big enough. So, of course, he's going to break an 80-yard run on you. He's pissed. Sproles puts a move on at the 30, 20, 15, 10, dashing to the 5, touchdown! Drafted in the fourth round in 2005, Sproles saw the field primarily as a kick returner. You have to worry about him taking it to the house every time he touches the ball. Our number 10 shortest player made our list by becoming the first player in NFL history to score his first two touchdowns on a kickoff and punt return. The little guy, he's hit a home run. The time like that, we needed him. 
Uh, the little guy turned into the big guy on the field real quick. Hunter Smith has got a putt on the back of the end zone. Just when you think you have him contained, he does something special. Right up the middle to the 40, 35, 30, and he goes to the 25, 20, 15, 10, 5. He did it again. Touchdown, Darren Sproles. After signing with the Saints in 2011, our number 10 shortest player set an NFL single season record with 2,969 all purpose yards. Sproles is going to score. Good man. Thank you, Coach. Right off, you're proud of you. There's something that makes great players, and whatever it is, he's got it. Coming up, who refused to be stonewalled by opponents? When he grew up, he and his friends used to have rock fights. <laughs> I'm always more intrigued by guys who are unnaturally tall. Harold Carmichael seemed really tall when he played. He was 6'8", but like all tall players, this list was out of his reach. Everybody thinks I'm supposed to catch every ball that's thrown to me. You're so tall, all you have to do is just reach up and get it. A 6'9 boxer, Ed Too Tall Jones, had quick hands attached to long arms. If I can just get my hands up, it can uh, cause a lot of problems. And at 6'9 and 320 pounds, Ernie Ladd had an appetite for destruction and food. Every meal he ate was like the Last Supper. But he couldn't match the hunger of a little giant. <laughs> the number nine shortest player of all time, Joe Boyd. Joe Morris was a little guy out of Villa. Explosive. He could break tackles. He had speed. He runs kind of the way Jim Brown used to run. He's a little guy. Shouldn't he be trying to make people miss? No. He was trying to be a plow horse. He was trying to hurt people. Our number nine shortest player starred on the 80s Giants. Sticks and stones could break his bones. And they toughened him up for the gridiron. When he grew up, he and his friends used to have rock fights. His kids used to throw rocks at each other. Big rocks. Felt like, like he got hit with a stone. Joe Morris was destined to be a football player. He was a guy who worked out with alignment. He could, like, bench 400 and squat 700. He had a giant work ethic. Our number nine shortest player also racked up a giant vocabulary. Roll one. What has transpired is I've, I've learned how to catch the ball a lot better. Kind of epitomizes his season. Doesn't worry about the, the frivolous things that personify what he wants out of a play. This team, this team, they, they uh... So why is Morris only number nine on our list? Injuries limited him to eight seasons, and in five of them, he averaged fewer than four yards a carry. He wasn't the poor man's Barry Sanders, he was the broke man's Barry Sanders. But he also broke plenty of tackles in 1985 and 86. It was like Katie by the door. Our number nine shortest player rushed for a combined 2,800 yards and 35 touchdowns. From his physical makeup, you wouldn't think that he would be an impact player. And Joe really carried a lot of the offensive burden. Yeah, just turn around and say, look, you've got to carry this for a while. Our passing game's just not there. You're not sick tonight, are you? Good. Your tongue's going to be hanging out. I said, okay, that's fine. As long as you know that I can't do it all year. 6.20 to go here in the first half. Sims is over, over, oh. There's certain guys who always having problems. I think Joe was always having problems. His whole life was I'm going to show Parcells. He doesn't think I can play. You know, they keep drafting running backs. I'll show them. Joe, if your heart starts fluttering, we'll send you down to county emergency. Get your recycle. And Joe had the Napoleon complex. It's like the French Riviera. They never thought I could do it. Everybody thought I was too short. But before he met his Waterloo, our number nine shortest player took home a Super Bowl ring as a bona parting gift. Yeah, he belongs because he won a Super Bowl. I'm from Buffalo, so believe me, that counts. I'd love to be short and win a Super Bowl once. The rest of your life, I'm man, nobody can ever tell you that you couldn't do it. Yeah! The number eight shortest player of all time, Mark Dunn. People had to question, 
Man, what's this little guy going to do? Hit it, Ward! Hit it, Ward! Hit it! Play handoff to Dunn. Dunn pops, weaves, deals, and wheels. Gets outside. Plays for the 25. 20 sideline. At five foot nine inches, Warwick Dunn was a little man who made a big first impression in the NFL. Little inside handoff on a delay to Dunn. Dunn breaks the tackle. Dunn tries to get out of there. Dunn's got the corner. The little guy does it again. Warwick Dunn just put on a showcase where everyone said, okay, this guy here is going to be a superstar. <laughs> Not surprisingly that, that Warwick makes this list. His height was probably his advantage. His low center of gravity, you know, he could hit the hole standing up sometime. <laughs> he faked out how many? Maybe seven Green Bay Packers? Never got a clean shot on Warwick. Looks like he's getting ready to get hit, head on train wreck, and all of a sudden he just steps to the side and the guy falls on his face. In 1997, Dunn was named the NFL's Offensive Rookie of the Year and went on to the Pro Bowl twice as a Buccaneer. I think the Bucs finally figured out his toughness. They didn't have to worry about his size. Warren Dunn leaving this crowd. That's all heart and soul, number 28. So at some point, they quit counting his number of touches and started counting their blessings that they had drafted this guy. Warren Dunn is a special running back. We gotta grind this thing out. We want this game to come down to us, all right? In 2002, our number eight shortest player moved to the Atlanta Falcons, where he earned another trip to the Pro Bowl. Because he was out to prove that he was the man. He played with a chip on his shoulder, but this was really a place where he found himself as a great football player. 90 yards! The longest run in Atlanta Falcon history! I really didn't even get tired on that. On his climb to the top, our number eight shortest player faced towering obstacles. When he was 18, his mother, a Baton Rouge police officer, was killed during a robbery. You don't ever want to get a call in the middle of the night saying someone that is pretty much your world is gone. She molded me, and I had 18 years and two days with her to be the type of man I am today. To honor his mother, Dunn established Homes for the Holidays, where the little man made a huge impact by helping single moms and their families purchase homes. You know, you talk about someone having a lasting effect on a family. He's just very, very, very unique. You don't find many work done in this world. I admire the guy for what he's done throughout his career on the field, but more so off the field because the guy is a great citizen. You just have to rub your eyes and say, this guy's just too good to be true. Coming up on Top 10. That guy's the greatest short guy ever, of all time. He's better than Vern Troyer. It's hard to believe, but Steve Smith didn't make our list, despite the Mighty Mouse's mighty resume. I took a low five one. It hit me so hard that it snapped my bicep tendon. Smith won the receiving triple crown in 2005, leading the NFL in catches, yards, and touchdowns. That man can't be stopped! But at 5'9 and a half, he soars over our height limit by a half an inch. Plus... Even he thinks he's big. Oh, Steve Smith takes a big hit. Big plays. My big plays and big games. Number seven shortest player of all time, Buddy Young. Five, four. What position would you have guessed he played? Point guard? Yeah, Buddy Young belongs on the list. He was five feet four. They would call him five foot four, but there's an argument that he wasn't. He was a tall five foot four. I played nine years of professional football. Weighed 167 pounds, stood five feet four and a half inches tall, and most of the time, I run it for my life. In the late 40s and 50s, our number seven shortest players starred for the New York Yankees, Dallas Texans, and Baltimore Colts. A kick returner and fullback, he averaged six yards per carry in two separate seasons. He was very elusive and he was very fast. He had, at one time, the world's indoor 60-meter dash record. He was about as fast as any man in the world. Our number seven shortest player was also as fast as any horse in the world. He raced the Colts mascot. A horse is a horse. Of course, of course. 
But this is a horse of a different color. He resisted at first because he thought it was some, you know, a little too uh, hokey. And I said, Young, there's no way that you're going to bail out that the public's coming out there tonight to see the inter-squad game, but they also want to see a man run against a horse. They always said that there's never been a track man alive who didn't have a little larceny in his heart. And Buddy came out before the gun went off and stole about a 25-yard jump on the horse. He had great acceleration off the blocks. The horse apparently didn't. Then he, he let it all go, man. He beat the horse by 10 yards. Buddy always said the worst discrimination in the world isn't color, it's size. Many in football looked upon tiny Buddy Young as a sideshow freak, an acorn among oaks. He wasn't just a novelty act. This wasn't Eddie Goodell. If he's so fast you can't touch him, it doesn't matter how big they are, right? I mean, Buddy, Buddy Young proved that. The fan appreciates the little guy simply because of what he's made out of. You see his quick feet over the lumbering strides of the big tackles and the defensive ends. And that contrast holds excitement. So if he's itty, bitty, tiny, 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 and he gets the job done, He's got a place. Short people never have to bow down to anybody after people like that. And you know, Buddy Young was a pioneer in the NFL. Number six shortest player of all time, Doug Flutie. How can anyone be better than Doug Flutie? I mean, it's like a holiday when they show his pass against the Canes down in the Orange Bowl. The deep one for the end zone. Is down there. Oh, he got it! He got it! He got it! That guy's the greatest short guy ever of all time. He's better than Vern Troyer. Doug, Doug Flutie was that Vern Troyer size. Well, he was three foot six, and then the, the afro made him like four foot eight. Most of him was mullet. Is he still playing? I think he's still playing. Because I saw him on a cereal box the other day, so maybe he was in it as the prize. If you're like, you know, a four foot tall quarterback, You've really got a challenge. You can't see anything downfield. No, no team wants a five foot nine quarterback. Nobody. That is until Mike Ditka plucked the pint-sized QB from the ranks of the USFL in 1986. After that hell Mary in Boston College, Ditka said, "Well, let's bring a little bit of that magic here." He just didn't know that was pixie dust, and Flutie was really Tinker Bell. <laughs> Mike Ditka saw the little big man as a savior. That's what he was a great football player. If he had one limitation, it was height. But uh, that never bothered me. But Ditka's affinity for his new quarterback certainly rubbed some of his veteran bears the wrong way. When Doug Flutie came in, Mike wrapped Doug around his arm, would have Doug over for dinner. He was viewed as kind of Ditka's pet project. That bothered you that some Bears players resented him enough. A lot of Bears players resent me. They said some some mean things about the guy. Jim McMahon thinks you're actually shorter than. Exactly. I, I, I'm a lot shorter than Jim thinks I am. And you're a lot taller. No, I'm about five foot two. Despite the contention, Flutie was named the starter for the 1986 NFC Divisional Playoff. If everybody else around him would have done their job, we would have won the playoff game. And Doug Flutie would have went down in history as one of the quarterbacks who led the Bears to the Super Bowl. I really believe that. But, you know, I tell everybody, the place to go see the little people act in the circus is at the All-State Arena, not Soldier Field. In New England, things were beginning to look up for Flutie. Flutie to pass again. But his head coach, Raymond Berry, still looked down on him. All he did was keep winning, and all Ray Berry wanted to do was get him out of the lineup. The NFL really lost out because nobody could figure out how to use Doug Flutie early on, and he had to go to the CFL. When you go up and look at what he accomplished in Canada, he was pretty good. Flutie rolling right, looking over the middle, complete touchdown! After three Grey Cup victories and six Canadian League MVPs, our number six shortest player was lured back to the NFL in 1998. When I think of Doug Flutie, I think of that wonderful renaissance season in 1998 and how he really created this whole second act for himself. Flutie rolling out, and he is in for the touchdown! Every time Doug Flutie took the field in an NFL game, he had the motivation in the back of his mind, I'm going to show everybody. And the five, Flutie's in! What allowed him to have the career that he had was he was driven by the desire to disprove the stereotype that a guy his size can't play and win. For the five, leaps over, touchdown, Sergeant!
There's nobody on your list of short guys who made it, ever drop kicked an extra point in the National Football League, except my man, Doug Flutie. He's going to drop kick it. is an all-time accomplishment, all right? And he did it, and that stands. So that's enough for me, I'll tell you. Up next, who has something in common with acorns, cashews, and almonds? Guys love nuts. The number five shortest player of all time, Maurice jones Drew. Man, you shot. I thought I was shot. <laughs> uh, you, you big. I'm small. <laughs> you shot, though. You shot in the ref. They got this guy up in Jacksonville now that uh, he's unbelievable, you know. Maurice Jones Drew? Now, how tall is he? 5'6, five, 5'8 five, on his best day, wearing my mom's heels. Oh, he got heels on. He could sue the city for building the sidewalk too close to his butt. But he's not small. I mean, he's thick. He's so massive in his lower body. Those big old legs, tree trunk thighs. The guy is a big guy. He just, he's vertically challenged. You know, when you look at Maurice Jones Drew, the first thing you think about is like sort of a pint sized semi truck that's quick. What a powerful run by the youngster from UCLA. Maurice Jones Drew is like we back up about 10 yards and we run as hard as we can. We hit a mailbox. We get arrested. Belted and still on his feet. How did he escape? How did he escape? He might be the best player in the league. I mean, he's that good. Don't get too carried away, Mr. Shula. We couldn't put Maurice Jones Drew any higher than number five on our list because his game has a glaring flaw. Two left feet. We lost cool points at the end, though. Oh, then the end zone dance. Wow. <laughs> I didn't know it was that bad. You talk about uh, miracle games and miracle comebacks and miracle this and miracle that. The greatest miracle in the history of the National Football League is how in the world were they able to get his name across that jersey. I think they use very small lettering on there. They give him real big shoulder pads. It's a miracle. Successfully tackling Jones Drew can require a minor miracle. And hey, when you hit this little joker, grab his ass. If it don't look pretty, grab it. It's why he's number five on our list, but why is he number 32? It wasn't because Jim Brown wore it or O.J. Simpson or Marcus Allen. Hopefully, you know, go up a little bit on some draft boards and, you know, come draft day, be a first-round draft pick. 32 teams passed him by, including the Jaguars. I was surprised they lasted until the second round. We were there for like seven hours. Actually, it was seven hours, 46 minutes. I talked to NFL scouts, and Maurice Jones-Drew was a complete afterthought. He'd be a good third down back. You know, he's a middle round kind of guy. I felt they really looked at it and they would have uh, put the stats together. I would have been like top 15 pick easy, but it wasn't about the stats and the draft. It's about your size and, you know, how you look. You know, I just got to go out there and prove, you know, I should have been higher. Short people everywhere who might have felt angry that they got their view obstructed at a rock concert all stood up tall and rejoiced the day that Big Bad Sean Merriman came rushing in to kill the Jaguars quarterback. I ought to try to blow his ass up. He's just a man. He's not like he's Clark Kinder and he's like Hancock or somebody, you know. Guys that small, you can't see him. Um, and before you know it, they duck him behind somebody that's 6'2 or 6'3, and there they are. He was knocked down on a block by the 5'7 inch Maurice Jones Drew. But that was a pretty good play by the short guy. At least everything came up off the ground. He just kicked them all up. The only thing better would be if he actually did the lights out dance. Lights out, baby. <laughs> the number four shortest player of all time, Bob Sanders. Four. It'll bat it up in the air, picked off. Bob Sanders. Bob Sanders is a difference maker like maybe no one has ever seen at the safety position in the NFL. Pound for pound, he might be the best player in the National Football League. Pay attention, man. It's going down tonight. He was a hybrid, you know, linebacker, defensive back, even though he was only 5'8", and that's maybe giving him a little bit. But the thing about Bob Sanders, not only is he short, he had one of the weirdest bodies. The neck's made by Schwarzenegger, the height's made by a munchkin, the shoulders are like Superman's, the waist is Batman's, and boom, here's Bob Sanders, who happens to be one heck of a football player. 
Bob is a he's a big play guy and he brings a lot of energy. Oh, oh, oh. Let's go, baby! One hit can bring that excitement to the whole defense, and, and he has the ability to do that. Sanders' panache for punishment preceded his professional career. I mean, he's a fierce, fierce hitter. See, he wasn't in Iowa, too. He would absolutely come up and hit you. A second-round pick in 2005, Sanders' stellar play led to a defensive MVP award two years later. I don't think even Bill Polian knew how good a tackler he was going to turn out to be in the NFL. I don't know if there's ever been anyone at the safety position that plays as physical. I mean, they might as well put 52 or 55, because that dude's a linebacker coming up and making hits. Yeah! Sanders may have ranked higher on our list had he stayed healthy. He's such a fierce hitter that he knocks himself out of games. I mean, he's missed a lot of games because of injuries. He plays so much time around the line of scrimmage. He hit so many people so hard it started to take its toll. With him out of the lineup, major difference. 2006, the Colts have arguably the worst run defense of all time. Bob Sanders misses 12 games that year with various injuries, and the Colts give up 173 yards rushing per game. Run it! Keep running it! It was a tough year, and especially with the defense struggling because he knew he could make a difference. Sanders comes back for the playoffs. Indy makes a run. They give up 82 yards rushing per game. That's the Bob Sanders factor. When Bob came back in, he, he was just flying to the ball, and everybody started flying to the ball. If we ain't physical, I don't know if it's hiding. But more than anything, I think he just gave us confidence. Our number four shortest player saved his best for the game's biggest stage, Super Bowl 41. Bob Sanders made a, a hit on Cedric Benson. And when that happened and we knocked that ball loose, and that energy came back on our sideline. Inch for inch, it's Bob Sanders' legacy that means the most to Indianapolis. His impact on that defense will be felt for years. He's the guy that brought the physicality, that toughness to the Colts defense. It will be there long after he retires. Coming up on Top 10, what does this field mouse have in common with our number three shortest player? Here's a hint. They both call the Superdome home. NFL, it seems the shorter the player, the cooler the nickname. Nolan Super Nat Smith irritated opponents in the late 60s. At 5'9", Lavania Albert Mitchell, better known as Stump, helped grind out plenty of yards for the Cardinals in his nine-year career. But there were others. Gerald McNeil, the ice cube, was a fan favorite because he wasn't much bigger than the kids, so the kids loved him. 20, 25, 30, the cube is loose! The Favorite short-ish player nickname, Don Nottingham, the human bowling ball. You gotta dig some footage up of Nottingham, and people will know what a weird-looking short football player is all about. Another favorite short player nickname belonged to the Chargers' little locomotive, Lionel Little Train James. You know, he's a little train that could. He just kept chugging. James set the all-purpose single-season yardage mark in 1985. But the little train could not beat out the nickname of the next guy on our list. The number three shortest player of all time, Sam Mills. Number three, Sam Mills is the field mouse. You wondered how a guy that compact could even consider playing linebacker in professional football. And Sam Mills looked like Tattoo. I kept looking around for Mr. Rourke, thought I was on Fantasy Island. I mean, he's listed at 5'9", but I think anybody would tell you he's a little shorter than that. I'm 5'9", three quarters, actually. I said, well, Sam was little. He wasn't little, he was short. And, and yet, that size probably might have been an advantage to him because he had great leverage. He would get up under guys, and, and he would just rock. For Sam Mills, his road to the NFL began with a few detours. Sam went to training camp with the Cleveland Browns, was cut. Went to the Canadian Football League to Toronto, was cut. 
Good fortune for him, along came the United States Football League. He played three years with us in the USFL, and he was, uh, in my opinion, the best football player we had over those three years. He reminded me so much of Willie Lanier, a middle linebacker who could do everything. When Jim Mora was named the Saints head coach in 1986, he brought Mills to New Orleans, but there were still some lingering doubts. I remember the first day he stepped onto the practice field, he looked short. You know, I was going to cut him, Cronell. I mean, I never came close to cutting him, but I'm, I'm thinking, God, we got to have a big guy, you know. And uh, it's been the worst mistake of my life, in or out of coaching. A half pint linebacker named Sam Mills is helping the Saints defense wage a full frontal assault on the NFL. He is a full speed player in the image of Mike Singletary. Good job, good job. Sam Mills really sort of played my role in Chicago in terms of being the leader. You know, he had to handle Von Johnson and Ricky Jackson and Pat Swilling and keep everybody together. Way to go, Barry. Good job, man. That's, that's the way you do it right there. Oh, yeah. Browning Nagel is back to pass on third down. Has the ball taken out of his hands by Sam Mills. He'll score. Sam Mills was an absolute genius student of the game. There yeah, that is, huh? Big buckets. He was bad, man. He really studied film. He understood what the offensive line was doing, how they were doing. He knew when to shoot the gaps. I, I remember a game playing against him. Sam called every single, and rightly called every single play we were running. Hey, watch the draw. It's a run. I said, Sam, would you give us a break here, man? I mean, you're killing us. I got it, baby. I got it. In 1994, at the age of 35, our number three shortest player signed with the expansion Panthers. He was the kind of guy they needed at that time. They were, you know, a fledgling organization. They needed a leader, and I think they felt like he was the kind of guy that could come in and lead their defense. Sam, respect the hell out of you, man. You're a one hell of a good player. We can't measure the effect that Sam Mills has had on our, on our football team. I've said this many, many times, and I, I've coached a long time. Sam Mills was the best football player I've ever coached. Coming up, which Redskins speed was over the top? The fastest man in the NFL. That's why he played so long. He, he lost his step, but he had one to give. Question, who was the shortest player in NFL history? It can't be a guy under 5'5 in the history of the league, right? Here's your answer. My name is Jack Supi Shapiro. I played in the NFL. I was 119 pounds. I was 5 feet, 1 half inch. And I was pretty tough for a little guy. Running back Jack Shapiro played one game for the Staten Island Stapletons in 1929. And while his gridiron career was shorter than he was, Soupy is still recognized as the shortest person to ever play professional football. I didn't expect to make a career out of football. I know my limits. I'm small. And uh, it's got to be a big man's game. The number two shortest player of all time, Daryl Green. These nets are killing us. I know. We got to we us. Ready? Yeah. Ready? Go. Cover your Straight face. Right here. Ready? Small, fast guy, very annoying. I would describe him as a gnat. I used to call Daryl Peanut because he was a little guy. This game is about the Redskins winning. Here, it's about the Redskins winning, guys. Our number two shortest player had a long career. In 20 Hall of Fame seasons, Daryl Green made seven Pro Bowls, won two Super Bowls, and ate his weight in Tootsie Rolls. Tootsie Rolls, buddy. Make you run fast. Green was a number one draft pick whose blinding speed helped him cover the entire field. When he was in college, he was Olympic caliber sprinter. The only man on the football field that could catch Eric Dickerson was Daryl Green. He was as fast almost as anybody in the world. But of course, track doesn't pay, football does. Big Green's in the huddle talking about we try to get 3-0. 3-0. This is about winning football. It's not about just you made the team and you're a Redskin. It's all time disease kicking in. We already lost one. Here's a guy that was running a 4-3 in his, like, 16th year. Here's a guy that's backpedaling 
at an older age as, as fast as some of these young receivers are running forward. That's why if he played so long, he, he lost his step, but he had one to give. Two A can still do it, baby. Mayor of D.C., Dale Green. After he left office, our number two shortest player's speed didn't slip. I got a phone call from Daryl Green who said that he had run in Florida a 40-yard dash in 4.46 seconds at the age of 40. No, wait. Is he 40 or is he 50? Daryl, at the age of 50, ran 4-4 uh, at a Pro Bowl event. And so that's legit. I couldn't drive a 40-yard dash in 4.4 seconds at the age of 50. Darrell would never be accused of being a perfect technician. He could have had twice as many interceptions if he could catch. I'd swear his hands were on the wrong arms half the time. He drops the ball! <laughs> the ball hit the ground. But he had instant quickness, instant acceleration. And he could match up with bigger receivers because he had a tremendous uh, ability to jump. Bravo to the Hall of Famer! When the ball was in the air, I'm not sure there was anybody really better than Darrell Green. He throws it up. It's picked off by Darrell Green. Joe Gibbs made a very conscientious effort never to let Darrell return punts during the regular season because he didn't want to get him hurt. But the 1987 playoffs were another story. As soon as we saw him back there, it was like, uh-oh, here we go. Green driven back to midfield on the far side. He's got the ball up to the 45, far side 40. He wanted to win that game so bad that he knew he had to score or they were going to lose. Ball to the end of the 30, breaks it to the near side, 25, watch out! I can still see him hurtling Cap Bozo, and I'm sure Cap Bozo can still see him hurtling Cap Bozo. He's gone! Touchdown, Washington Redskins! At about the 10-yard line, you, you see him start to slow up and grab his rib cage. He tore rib cartilage, hurtling the last defender. Kind of like that scene from Rocky. Remember at the end of the fight, his eyes are all swollen shut, and he's saying, Cut him, Mick, cut him! Battered and bruised, but cut him, Mick, cut him. That's the difference between a winner and a loser. The guy that will go that far is going to win. Coming up, our number one shortest player was a black diamond in the rough. Now imagine trying to catch someone skiing. I've never tried it, but I think it would be impossible. Before we keep running through our list of the top ten shortest players of all time, let's see where everyone fell so far. If he's not number one, I don't even want to know who's, like, number one, for real. Darren Sproles is number one. Zero. Number one. Joe Morris always had the final word in collisions. Number eight. Ward Dunn was a running back the Bucks could count on. They quit counting his number of touches and started counting their blessings that they had drafted this guy. Number seven. Five-four Buddy Young didn't shield his size. He even played smaller than he was. No face masks, thigh pads, or hip pads. Number six, Doug Flutie was a shoe-in for the list. I haven't seen that since the days of no face masks and leather helmets. Number five, MJD can't catch Saturday Night Fever on Sundays. If you can't dance and you're little. Number four, Bob Sanders likes hard hits, not soft lips. Hey, don't never let a man put some lip gloss on your lip, man. Number three, Sam Mills couldn't be stopped by scissors or paper. He would just rock them. Number two, Daryl Green made a college legend deserve a dunce cap. What's y'all coach name down there at Penn State? Joe Paterno. He's not all that smart. He never recruited me. And now, the number one shortest player of all time, Barry Sanders. Two, four, six, eight. Who do we appreciate? Barry! Ten seasons in the NFL, averaged better than 300 carries a season, averaged better than 1,500 yards a season, and for all of those carries, finished his career with a five-yard per carry average. Barry Sanders is the best short football player of all time. That's not even a question. He is certainly the best little guy. That's pretty awesome. It's awesome, but it's kind of an insult, too. 
Our number one shortest player of all time has always been a little sensitive about his height. Growing up, I always thought um, if I could just get to six feet, maybe I could be a, a good football player. Barry Sanders dreamed of starring at Oklahoma for Barry Switzer. You don't go take a five foot seven, 165, 70 pound wing back uh, in high school when you only got 30 scholarships. Oklahoma State, they were fortunate to get it. In fact, it was a gift to them. Turns out, I guess I didn't need those extra few inches. My son met Barry Sanders, and he's like, that's Barry Sanders? I'm like, yeah. He was like, he's not even six foot. I'm like, I know. Barry Sanders is a, a 280 pound man who was cut off at the knees and had his shoes reattached. Barry Sanders was like 5'8", but when you look at him, he looked like he had four and a half feet of legs. Barry Sanders with those big, big legs! He had games against Bears where it seemed like they simply refused to tackle it. And they never had a chance. Guys were laughing at each other, and they were just saying, you know what, hey, I at least touched him. You didn't touch him at all. I got my hand on his jersey. Barry Sanders can be very, very dangerous. No one in the history of the game ever stopped and started in a different direction as quickly as Barry did. Every time when you talk about Barry, we say that's the greatest run, that's the greatest run, that might have been the greatest run. I don't know how Barry Sanders didn't blow out a knee about every third play. One of the finest running backs in the United States of America, and our number one pick, Barry Sanders. Barry Sanders had Wayne Fonts as his head coach for the bulk of his career. Wayne Fonts was handed the keys to a Ferrari, and he wasn't sure how to drive it sometimes. He had all of his yards, yet when they would get to the goal line, they'd take him out of the game. Anywhere on the field, Barry Sanders was in a goal line situation. When in doubt, give it to Barry. I feel it's a privilege to be one of the players that will, will like help restore the roar in the dome. What Barry Sanders did with how little surrounded him, insane. His quarterbacks, Eric Kramer. Ball stumbled, and a turnover for the Redskins. Rodney Pete. Hey, look out, intercepted the Dolphins. Andre Ware. These are the other weapons on his offense. Every defense was ready to stop Barry Sanders. And he still motored his way. Barry Sanders, the guy quit. He left the game way too early. Who quits when you're that good? He certainly had a lot left, but he didn't play that long. Some say our number one player sold his career short. It just for you, like our juicy outlaw ribeye. And now, try our hearty new flat iron steak, only $12.99, or bacon wrapped sirloin, just $11.99, only at Longhorn Steakhouse. Before we keep running through our list of the top 10 shortest players of all time, let's see where everyone fell so far. Number 10. If he's not number one, I don't even want to know who's like number one for real. Darren Strolls is number one. Zero. Number one. Joe Morris always had the final word in collisions. Number eight. Ward Dunn was a running back the Bucks could count on. They quit counting his number of touches and started counting their blessings that they had drafted this guy. Number seven, five four Buddy Young didn't shield his size. He even played smaller than he was. No face masks, thigh pads, or hip pads. Number six, Doug Flutie was a shoe in for the list. I have been still dancing in the days of no face masks and leather helmets. Number five. MJD can't catch Saturday Night Fever on Sundays. If you can't dance and you're little. Number four, Bob Sanders likes hard hits, not soft lips. Hey, don't never let a man put some lip gloss on your lip, man. Number three, Sam Mills couldn't be stopped by scissors or paper. He would just rock them. Number two, Daryl Green made a college legend deserve a dunce cap. What's y'all coach name down at Penn State? Joe Turner. He's not all that smart. He never recruited me. And now, the number one shortest player of all time, Barry Sanders. Two, four, six, eight. Who do we appreciate? Barry! 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 Ten seasons in the NFL. Averaged better than 300 carries a season. Averaged better than 1,500 yards a season. 
and for all of those carries, finished his career with a five-yard per carry average. Barry Sanders is the best short football player of all time. That's not even a question. He is certainly the best little guy. That's pretty awesome. It's awesome, but it's kind of an insult, too. Our number one shortest player of all time has always been a little sensitive about his height. When I always thought um, if I could just get to six feet, maybe I could be a, a good football player. Barry Sanders dreamed of starring at Oklahoma for Barry Switzer. You don't go take a five foot seven, 165, 70 pound wing back uh, in high school when you only got 30 scholarships. Oklahoma State, they were fortunate to get it. In fact, it was a gift to them. Turns out, I guess I didn't need those extra few inches. Son met Barry Sanders, and he's like, that's Barry Sanders? I'm like, yeah. He was like, he's not even six foot. I'm like, I know. Barry Sanders is a, a 280 pound man who was cut off at the knees and had his shoes reattached. Barry Sanders was like 5'8", but when you look at him, he looked like he had four and a half feet of legs. Barry Sanders with those big, big legs. He had games against the Bears where it seemed like they simply refused to tackle it. And they never had a chance. Guys were laughing at each other, and they were just saying, you know what, hey, I at least touched him. You didn't touch him at all. I got my hand on his jersey. Barry Sanders can be very, very dangerous. No one in the history of the game ever stopped and started in a different direction as quickly as Barry did. Every time we talk about Barry, we say that's the greatest run, that's the greatest run, that might have been the greatest run. I don't know how Barry Sanders didn't blow out a knee about every third play. One of the finest running backs in the United States of America, and our number one pick, Barry Sanders. Barry Sanders had Wayne Fonts as his head coach for the bulk of his career. Wayne Fonts was handed the keys to a Ferrari, and he wasn't sure how to drive it sometimes. He had all these yards, yet when they would get to the goal line, they'd take him out of the game. Anywhere on the field, Barry Sanders was in a goal line situation. When in doubt, give it to Barry. I feel it's a privilege to be one of the players that will, will uh, help restore the roar and the dome. What Barry Sanders did with how little surrounded him, insane. His quarterbacks, Eric Kramer. Ball stumbled and a turnover for the Redskins. Rodney Pete. Hey, look out, intercepted Dolphins. Andre Ware. These are the other weapons on his offense. Every defense was ready to stop Barry Sanders. And he still motored his way. Barry Sanders? The guy quit. He left the game way too early. Who quits when you're that good? He certainly had a lot left, but he didn't play that long. Some say our number one player sold his career short. He retired at age 30. Doug Flutie played until he was 43. Quitter! Doug Flutie never quit in his life. Probably the most popular short football player ever is Doug Flute. No. No. Barry Sanders was the greatest short player in the history of the NFL. We agree. He retired only 1,400 yards short of the career rushing record. A lot of people talked about, well, he's so close to breaking this record. Now he only has one more running back to catch, the former Bear, Walter Payton. What was in the record books never mattered to him. He played the game because he was good at it. He played the game because he liked it. At the point when he stopped liking it, he stopped playing. He already knew he was an otherworldly talented running back, and he was that every morning he woke up. So what does he need the number for to tell him that? Barry may have come up short in the record books, but he's number one on our list as the greatest short player of all time. Sometimes you just gotta look to the heavens and say, wow. Barry Sanders is the greatest pure runner that ever suited up in the NFL, and he should be number one on this list. Number one, Barry Sanders, end of story. Thanks for watching. Drive home safely.